Yeah. They required someone who didn't know how to dance very well and who's dancing for the first time. In my head, I was dancing absolutely perfectly, but they said, yeah, this is great, you know, because that's what we needed, this unfinished kind of dance that you did. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I was killing it. <laughs> You're like, Rithik, watch out. Subi's yeah. coming in. <laughs> Hello people, I'm Jabby Kuwait. Joining us is Achara Kirk Hello. and Sumit Vyas. Yay! <laughs> how are you? I am very well. How many people have asked you so far, Mikesh, how could you do this to Tanya? <laughs> <laughs> how could you switch loyalties? Exactly. Now you're in a you're in a new movie, you're you're in a lead role with a different lady. How could yeah. you? <laughs> <laughs> when you found out that you got the part, were you like, okay, I got this, or were you nervous? No, I was really happy. I was very, very excited. This is a fairly new crew, so I, did, I didn't know anyone. Then Rocky came and she narrated the story to me. I really liked her approach to how she wants to tell the story, because that was really unconventional. And she comes from a documentary filmmaker background. She wanted to shoot this film also a little bit in a documentary. Style. That was very, very cool. That was something that I was very keen on doing. So what was it like working with Kalki? Very, very good. I kind of knew her because, you know, she's also from the same theater circle. We would bump into each other on and off, but uh, I'd never worked with her. I mean, a lot of credit to her because, you know, the first day of rehearsal, we were like right into it. Like it never, it never felt like, you know, we, we're working for the first time. We don't really know each other. And, all of that, she was like right into it. Was she different than other actresses you'd worked with in the past? Like was her style any different from anyone else? Yeah, I would say that because she's a really spontaneous actor and this film also required a lot of spontaneity because they didn't want us to memorize lines and you know, act them out. They wanted us to just be in the situation and react. And that really worked well because Kalki comes from that school of acting and you know, she's very, very comfortable that school of acting. You guys were doing a lot of improv then? Yeah, we did a lot of improvs. How much of that character is like you and how much of it is different? The thing is that this film covers the life of this couple for a span of four years. So the beginning is, is a lot like me and then I wanted it to become a different person. How, what was it like working with a kid? Was that your first time working with a kid? No, I have worked with a kid before, but this this was really tough because, uh, you know, because of the kind of film it is and, you know, we didn't have to, like, memorize lines, so we just had to make friends with the kid. Rocky really uh, made my life miserable because... Uh, <laughs> because the three-year-old kid uh, with whom we had a lot of scenes, we got briefly introduced in the first day, first big scene that we shot together was me and Kalki having a huge fight and the kid walks into it. Rakhi didn't rehearse with the kid. She wanted the kid to have an actual reaction of this. And I was yelling at Kalki at the top of my voice and that kid just walked in and saw me doing this and saw Kalki crying and then, yeah, that was the end of it. I was the villain. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! Oh, and then post that scene, I tried so hard to make friends with her. I was like, you know, I need to, I, I need to impress this girl, <laughs> this three-year-old. I went with her, I, I played with goats and I, I told her stories, but like she was too sc too scared of me. <laughs> oh no! That's tough, because like, the very first scene, her first impression of you is, wow, this guy's really mean and he's really scary. Yeah. Your yeah, director really gave like, you a hard job. Yeah, and there are two, three of these, you know, uh, intense argument and fight kind of scenes. And <laughs> yeah, every time Rocky would do the same thing, she would pull this down. So no matter how much friendship and equation I would build with that kid, again she would walk into me yelling at someone or hitting someone and then she would get really scared of me. <laughs> I know you've done uh, a feature, feature films in the past. Is this your first uh, starring feature film role? Yes, yes, I would say that. So what was it like compared to something like Tripling or Permanent Roommates? Like, is there a difference in the process? The only difference in the process is the kind of the way in which this film is shot, you know, because okay, gotcha. we had really long takes, you know, like there's a scene where we come into this building compound in a car, we pick up the child, we get into the elevator, we reach our house, we open the door, she puts the child to sleep, we have an argument, then it ends. So it is all in one take. Yeah. And there are several of these. And that is something that we are not, I've never done it on camera before. Kalki had mentioned both her and the director were crying afterwards because it was so yeah. intense. And there are two, three of these. Like there's one scene where she comes home drunk and you know, we're we having an argument and then she goes inside the bathroom, starts puking and then I go inside and we have an 
another big scene in the bathroom. So, I mean, in, in this way, the cameraman was one of the actors because he was actually rehearsing with us. Yeah. He had to be, you know, blocked with the actors. Have you watched the film yet? I've seen the first rough cut. I want to see the finished product. How are you feeling so far having seen what you've done? Are you happy? Like, are you like, oh, I should have changed it here. I should have done this here. I was pretty happy. I, uh, you know, the first time I see, I, I, I forget that, you know, I have to look after myself uh -huh. <laughs> then I start seeing the film yeah. as, as a whole like is, is this film working for me or no as an audience and luckily that worked for me a lot I think now the second time when I watch it I'd, be, I'd probably be a little more critical of my work and you know like there were a couple of places where I thought I could have what do you say I could have been better sure. <laughs> but uh, but yeah I mean that's always the case I think when you're an artist anytime you look at your work you're always like ugh I could have, yeah. I could have done yeah. better. But anyone else who watches it is like, "What are you talking about? You were great. Yeah. Like I totally bought it. You moved me to tears." Are you done with like web series now? You're like, no more TVF. Sumit is all feature films now. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 not at all. In fact, uh, we're gonna start uh, working on the second season of Tripling. We're gonna start writing it. Both, both are a lot of fun, and you know, both have their dedicated audience in today's time. So. Right. Luckily, you know, it's not it's not that huge a difference anymore, you know, like a lot of people watch web series and a lot of people hopefully will watch the film. <laughs> yeah, well, I definitely want to watch the film. It's interesting that you said that the director comes from a documentary background because it really felt like we were there and it felt uncomfortable and it felt so real. I think at the end of the trailer, I was just like... Ah, you know, like it was too much, but I'm so excited to see it. It was a really fulfilling process because, you know, there was no, there's no scope for, for lies. You have to be truthful and you have to be present in the situation. You can't lie because it's all organic. You can't, you, you don't have lines to fall back on. You, have, you don't have blockings to fall back on. You don't have takes to fall back on. Right. You have to be present in the moment and you have to be as honest as you can with your character. We, yeah, that's why I was really fulfilling. We saw your uh, short film not too long ago. Born Free. Born Free. I've noticed there's a lot of like bigger actors who are doing these short films now. Now, Azun Siddiqui did a short film called Carbon. Is this a new trend that's happening where all the big actors are doing short films more often? Uh, yeah, I mean, there are a couple of big brands who are interested in short films. So then what happens is that it really helps the makers to go all out like a proper film. Yeah. And yeah, it's a great medium. It's short, it's crisp, and you can tell a story in, in 20, 15, 20, 40 minutes. Yeah, it was a lot of fun and gets over soon. <laughs> it's a four day shoot. That's what I was going to ask you about. Is it like, is it much quicker, the process all around, than like a feature film or a web series? Because it seems like, in my mind, a short film is always a, on a truncated, tight schedule. Yeah, even I thought so because you know, I, I've made a few short films before and, and they were all like on a very, very tight budget and we had to squeeze in all our resources, all our friends to, you know, help out. And here I was shooting with a professional crew and it was really surprising because I didn't know short films was shot on such a big scale. Right. You know, we right. shot all the way to Goa and we shot in two cities and it's quite something. Was that a fulfilling project for you? Because it seemed like it was closer to the heart. There's like, it's an artist's story. Yeah, yeah, it was really cool. And uh, that's why, I, I mean, you know, I was glad that they approached me for the film and I jumped on it. After doing Ribbon, you've got Tripling coming up. Anything else in the pipeline? For film that I'm doing, which is a Bollywood multi star mm. sort of a film. Are you singing? Do you sing and dance? I'm dancing that film. You're dancing? <laughs> yes. And and it's really <laughs> are you already a, a good dancer or did you have to do a lot of training beforehand? No, no, I have to do a lot of training because, you know, uh, the film has a lot of popular Bollywood actors and, and they're very good at dancing. And luckily, I mean, the sequence, they, they required someone who didn't know how to dance very well and was dancing for the first time. So although in my head, I was dancing absolutely perfectly, but they said, yeah, this is great, you know, because that's what we needed, this unfinished kind of dance that you did. Yep. <laughs> I thought I was killing it. <laughs> You're like, Rithik, watch out. Subi's yeah. coming in. <laughs> did you have to train for a long time for it? Are you still kind of keeping up that training just in case you have to, you know, dance? So now I will. I really want to. I mean, it's it's a lot of fun dancing. You know, we did a few rehearsals before the show, uh, before the song, but clearly that I, 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 I it's not enough, and I need to rehearse a little more, and I need to get my groove back. So yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. I think we both need to. 
Do Yo, well, she's gonna she's gonna start taking a Bollywood dance class. Yeah. <laughs> she won't be able to dance as good as you. Yeah. No. Clearly, <laughs> clearly not. I have too long a body to to yeah. dance. It's too many things moving at the same time. You just need more practice. That's what it yeah. is. Yeah. That was the first thing I noticed about you when I met you, because I was like, "Holy shit! <laughs> <I'm> so tall." <laughs> It's <laughs> ridiculous. When did you shoot Ribbon? Right before you guys came to Mumbai, I think a month before that, uh, we were shooting Ribbon. Oh my god. Wow. I would have picked your brain like crazy. I didn't know you guys had just shot that. That's crazy. It was so funny. I, I had to tell you this story. We were, when we were, Kanki and I were rehearsing, and because we were rehearsing in our houses, yeah. so when we when she came to my house and we rehearsed these scenes where, you know, we were fighting and yelling at each other and making all kinds of sounds, yeah. And then in the night, my secretary came up <laughs> of the building. He's an old man and he's like, all good? <laughs> <laughs> I noticed in the trailer there's some kissing scenes. Did that have to be handled any particular way? Because I know kissing scenes aren't done like a whole lot in Bollywood films or Indian films in general. I mean, that's the whole fun of it. Like once Kalki and I, we, we started rehearsing, we realized that it cannot look like it's a big deal. Because if when you're a couple, you kiss, you know. And you make it a big deal in your head, then it look it look awkward. It should look like it comes really naturally to you, and then it goes. You know, it can't look like you know it's an event. We got to see the uh, the Netflix commercial that you shot. Ah, yes, <laughs> that was brilliant. It was it really was good. So cute. Yeah, it was cute. We recently shot another one called Truth in There, Me and Nidhi. Well, I wanted to watch it, but they don't have subtitles. I like it when when you and Nidhi work together. It's so cute. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Yeah, it was like old times. So is uh, the new season of Permanent Roommates all done now? Are we going to be seeing it soon at some point? Yes, definitely. I mean, uh, right now, Miss Supati Sarkar is busy writing pictures, I think. I think he's working on that. But next year, I think he'll start working on Permanent Roommates. Mm -hmm. We're all waiting for him to start writing. <laughs> he needs more writers. You're like, come on! <laughs> because we're so used to his brand of writing and his brand of humor. It, it, it's a sort of a comfort zone that that has come in, that has seeped in, you know, with me, Nidhi, Samir, the director, and Bishwapati, Sarkar, the writer. So we don't want to like get more people in. Like we, we are so happy in the small unit, and you know, it just makes the process very, very quick. Once he's written it, though, is it different for your family seeing now that you're in a movie, movie as opposed to a web series, or is the same? No, no, it is. I mean, they're quite happy these days, and you know, a lot of people, your extended family, tends to call you a little more often than they do. <laughs> 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 they ask about their son a little more than they do. And these days, you know, because we're promoting the film, so on and off, things keep coming in newspapers. So yeah, they get really stoked when they open the newspaper in the morning, they see me, they're pretty, they get, they're really happy. That's so cool. I know, right? That's awesome. And be like, ah, oh, that's my son. <laughs> do you see yeah. that? That's, that's my son. <laughs> so what did you do for Diwali? Diwali I spent with my family because I was shooting in Delhi and I was not in Bombay for a very long time. So I came, I two days back, I landed back in Bombay. So I just wanted to stay with them and spend as much time as I can with them while I can. I basically wanted to smother them with my attention in one day. <laughs> did you succeed? I think I did because after a point they were just getting a little restless. I said, is he gonna go or what? Yeah. <laughs> he just to move. He's just hanging around. It's been like a while. <laughs> One question I had asked Kalki that I wanted to ask you is when you were shooting Ribbon, because you were doing like these long takes and whatnot, did you ever find like afterwards it was so intense that you had to like decompress? Yeah, a couple of times, you know, because there are a couple of very sensitive moments. Um, it's Diwali and yeah, oh. Like oh. I thought you were in a war zone for a second. I was yeah. gonna ask you, like, what's going on? I thought so, I thought someone who kept, just kept throwing away stuff in the garbage. I know, or like, like on like, the roof, just like dropping barrels. Like, I don't, I don't remember Sumit living right next to a dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> there was in fact a, a session with the therapist. It's not there in the film anymore, but Rocky actually called a therapist. She just said that you guys go ahead and you're a couple and just have a session, you're not getting along. So that session with the therapist got really deep because we actually had a session with the therapist. We talked about a lot of stuff, which was really personal. Once that session ended, we were a little, I was a little shaken that night. Yeah. Whoa, 
That was intense. Did you ever feel when you were doing a scene that was particularly intense or particularly heated that afterwards all of those emotions because it feels so real you you just feel like I know we're just acting but like I I can't stand to look at you right now Kalki like I'm so mad at you. Not with Kalki it actually uh, it happened with me because with you know as the film progresses and the couple faces a lot of problems i feel our generation in india is kind of struggling with this dilemma because i have grown up in a fairly middle class household like most people in india and my father used to go to work my mother used to take care of the house and that's the equation i've seen and my father's word would be the last word in the house he was the head of the family and then obviously i grew up and then now things are different and then you know men and women they work together they take care of the house together they're pretty much equal but i think it, as soon as there is trouble in 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 the household the patriarch in you kind of comes out because that's what you've grown up watching and that's what i wanted to discover in the film in this character that although when the girl gets pregnant and she has to take a back seat from work and she has to you know be at home and take care of the child and be just pregnant and the man takes over the house he kind of wants to become the man of the house a couple of scenes i came back and i was like am i this person is this there in me did i did i ever do something like this i'm glad i did this film because you know now i know what not to do or how not to feel mm. it's almost like a therapy it seems to be able to explore that side of you and kind of live it and then be like i don't want that or that felt good i want to do more of that it's really interesting i was going to ask you about tripling i know you were one of the writers on it what inspired where the show went towards the end of the series season 1 rather cuz it it kind of went in this other direction that i wasn't expecting it it became almost yeah. like more a lot more chill and i was just wondering like if anything in particular inspired that it was a very very conscious decision on our part me and akash we discussed it that we didn't want to do the conventional end where you know everything all hell uh, loses and you know everybody goes crazy and we didn't want that from the very beginning when we started writing we knew that in the end we wanted it to be a very calm and a, a chill kind of an end we wanted to create parents that you know we thought would be really cool like what if my dad behaved like this or what if my mom behaved like this and what if they lived this life it was a a fantastical sort of a situation i've been mulling in my head for a while you know that beyond a point what am i going to do with all the money that i make and all the big houses that i buy and i don't want my kids to fight over it you know like the other day i was talking to my sister when i was writing this show i used to meet her a lot and i was like you know i'm so glad that we don't own a lot of properties and you know uh, we don't inherit a lot of wealth because that's never something that we'll be fighting about we can fight about all kinds of things about what you said and what you should have said and how you behaved and why didn't you turn up on time but we will never fight about okay this property belongs to me and this much wealth should come to me and this will never come between us right. and it's so great so that's why we wrote that scene with the father that i wanted him to say that you know beyond a point i realized that i don't want my kids i don't want to give this to my kids a reason to fight yeah you know that's not what, I, what i'm earning for i want to give them a reason to be happy and which is why i want to create a place an environment where whenever they're in trouble they can come to this place and this will only make them chill right. <laughs> this will be make them happy they can never fight over this so it seemed like everything was pretty well resolved at the end of tripling season 1 are you allowed to say anything about where it goes from from there we don't know we're still struggling with that because we've just been uh, bouncing ideas to each other and we've been rejecting each other's ideas for a while oh. <laughs> the reason it takes time is because it's easy to write gags but we want to look for a soul you know that the thing that connects to your heart were there any particular film inspirations for you in writing tripling no i but uh, i did watch a lot of screwed up family films because, <laughs> <laughs> because i love watching them i remember i was in goa for some show for some event and then i was coming back my flight got delayed and i watched this is where i leave you i love that film it's a really funny film you must catch it and i i was just sitting in goa airport getting high on beer and watching this and laughing my ass out <laughs> like yeah this is so cool these guys are so screwed up <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but they're so good together. That must be completely different from like your own family, right? Yeah, okay. because we're pretty like normal. We're not a screwed up family or maybe we are but we don't know. But <laughs> Yeah, cuz when I watch that stuff I'm like, "Oh my god, that's too familiar." <laughs> <laughs> 
yeah. we really wanted to explore this crazy family and i think india is, is so much about family and family values the fun part is that every family when you look at a family picture looks so perfect the son the daughter the grandchildren the parents and they look like a really sorted piece of whatever the moment you dig deeper you find out that they are so screwed up all of us we're all so screwed up in the end we just need to tap that i notice on your instagram you've always got like these travel photos you're always like traveling and stuff i recently did this uh, travel show called stupid man smartphone oh wow. uh, so, so that's exactly. what that's what your hashtags were. I was like, what is yeah. this? This is a show that BBC had made and it's an award-winning show and uh, there's another platform called Voot that got this show bought the rights of the show and they created it here. So I was the stupid man with a smartphone. The idea of the show is that, you know, we're so addicted to our phones from the time we wake up to the time we sleep, we're just like we're on the phone. Everything is on the phone. What if you were to you were left in a god forsaken place where you don't speak the language you don't know where you are and you were given a, a small simple mission and all you had for aid was your phone that's all you had how would you survive that's why i was traveling with that oh. okay well google translate helped us a lot in india i did use a lot of that so wait where and were you? a lot of dumb streets where were you traveling so we went to tamil nadu we went to rajasthan Okay. We went to Arunachal Pradesh, so yeah, we went to some really odd places. Were you trying foods out that you've never had before? All the time. Okay. Uh, mostly because they, they took away all my money, they took away all the protein bars and the, the cooler things that I was carrying and they were like, no, just source it out, you have your phone, go ahead. But you had no money, how could you buy food or you just had to rely on the kindness of People? Of people and explore and I created fire, I lived in a tent, wow. hunting, I ate a crab, I, I'm not a crab eater but yeah I had to because I was really hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean you've got to be a special type of Bear grills person to be able to yeah. like do that hardcore survival stuff. That's really like, cool. We were not like in the, you know, we would find some, some villagers, some local people and they were really helpful. Also, uh, you know, the camera crew who was trying to make life difficult for us kind of make like, made life easy for us because the moment people saw the camera, they wanted to help us. <laughs> yeah, I was That's a little ask, bit of a yeah. cheat. That's a little bit of a cheat. Right? Because yeah. as soon as yeah. they know that it's a show, they're like, oh, cool. Let yeah. me help you. I can be on TV. How do you handle social media? Because like, I know that you get way more messages than I do. How do you handle like Twitter and Instagram and all the messages that from people you don't know? Like, do you respond a lot? Like everything. I just... <laughs> <laughs> like because a lot of messages and then you know i mean i won't be able to work because I, you know it's a lot of messages which is great but so then i end up liking everything and one or two which i feel i can reply to i, I do reply yeah. because it also becomes like if i reply to two three people then the others feel that why not why didn't he reply to me yeah when the idea is not to be choosy or you know i'm not trying to give special attention to someone it's just that you know, you're working and you don't get time to reply to all the messages. Yeah. So sometimes you send, a, send like a general message to to the people who can kind of write. And then sometimes I also end up liking the unkind stuff because I don't really pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, like, you were so shit. Yeah. You pee shit and I like, like, hey, no, I'll like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you ever respond to the mean comments? Sometimes I do, and sometimes it's fun to respond to the mean comments. What do you say? Mean things. <laughs> because they don't know I'm a writer, I can be meaner than they are. I've learned to start doing that actually, because I used to be the kind of person who's always, always nice, but I've kind of yeah. gotten tired of that, and so if someone's a jerk to me, I'm a jerk right back, but I'm yeah. clever about it. One guy commented that, you only reply to females, you know, you never reply to males. And I was like, no, I don't really check the gender. I just reply to messages, but hey, I'm replying to your message now. What does that make you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. Oh dear. Are you getting like flooded with more opportunities now for, for films, like ever, ever since Ribbon? Has it, changed, yeah. has it changed anything? Yeah, I mean, luckily there were always film opportunities even before Ribbon came out. And, and now that the Ribbon promos and the other things have started coming out, the opportunities are, are more. I'm a little choosy. I like to take my time over things yeah. because I don't want to regret. I don't want to like choose something and then regret while I'm in it. So that's why I always take a lot of time before I 
agree on doing something. Is it exciting, like knowing that you're kind of getting more power in what you're able to do? Yeah, and also because uh, you know what happens is a lot of similar stuff comes your way when you know because of permanent roommates, a lot of similar rules were coming my way, even in terms of films, you know, because they wanted to see the same thing in a film. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, I mean, I've already done this. Why do you want to see the same thing again in another medium, you know? Like Ribbon, I did it for the same reason, because it's, you know, it, it explores a really dark and gritty side of this person, and it's not a quirky or a goofy person, which is what I really enjoyed about the film. Jackie Chan goes through the same thing. He says that he keeps getting opportunities for cop from Hong Kong, cop from America, CIA cop, CIA this and that. And it's like, I, I've done this. I've been doing this. Can I do something else? Yes, yes. You know? And it's so fun to watch it. And sometimes you have to kind of let go of a lot of good opportunities where you can, you know, make money and be more famous and stuff like that. But I mean, in the longer run, you'll kind of run out of gas, you know, because people will will get bored of watching the same thing again and again. So, yeah. which is why you need to refrain from doing the same thing and maybe do something a little smaller, but more different and more significant. I don't mind doing that. Like, I'm dying to play more wicked characters than, than the simple ones. What draws you to a script? What I'm going through as a person and as an artist, I feel this is a medium where I can express myself. I'm not very good at, at expressing myself in life. You know, half the time people don't know if I'm upset or I'm happy or... Uh, I don't know how to do that. She goes through the but, same thing. <laughs> but this is a medium where I, where I really get to express myself, you know, be it my political views or be it my whims and, you know, uh, what I'm feeling at that point. A part of me is always looking at that, you know. There's a point when I'm really upset and I just want this to just get out, just, uh -huh. I just want an outlet. And instead of just yelling at someone or just getting into a stupid fight, I, I, a part of me is looking for that part, yeah. that opportunity, that show, that, that thing where I, where I get to do this. And then it's out, you know, then that monster's out. This is an outlet, we can express it through a story and we can probably reason it for ourselves as to why, why am I feeling this? Why am I feeling jealous? Why am I feeling enraged or happy or funny? or or any of these things. A part of me is always looking for that. And sometimes when I don't get it, I start writing. It has to come out. Speaking of writing, when you're doing uh, writing with your partners for tripling and you're rejecting yeah. each other's ideas, how do you guys do that? And how does it not become a thing where you're like, oh, fuck you, like that was a good idea. How do you how do you handle that? I choose to work with people who, who kind of get what I'm saying and get, and I get what they're saying. That makes the process a little easy. And besides that, I mean, it's, it's a lot more fun when you win with your idea. That fight is a lot of fun, you know, when, when you have a brilliant idea and you just have to put it in such a way that we're pretty open like that. Like, if you don't like an idea, we say, shit. So then, wow, you guys just say it straight up like that, huh? <laughs> uh, then, you know, you, you kind of mull over it and sometimes you also realize that, yeah, maybe it wasn't as great as I thought it was. And sometimes you feel, no, it was great and I need to maybe represent it, re represent it to, mm -hmm. to my co-writer so that he gets it. So yeah, that's a lot of fun. My next question is for like anyone who who's watching this and might be starting out or, or is, you know, a young actor trying to get their get get their foot in the door. Did you struggle in the beginning like at all to get roles, to, to get seen, to be taken seriously in the beginning of, of, of acting? I mean, I've been acting since uh, the year 2000. Okay. It's only 2014 that people realize that I exist. So, so I've been, uh, yeah, I've done a lot of getting rejected. I'm sure all actors go through this, you know, like we, for me, we used to, back in 2004, 2005, I used to just dress up like a man who's going to an office with a bag full of clothes with like a t-shirt and like a Sherwani and stuff like that. And I would just go to these studios and say, do I fit in? Do I fit into a, an ad film? You would just go like a salesman. Wow. And there were auditions happening in, in, in buildings and oh, you would wow. just land if I fit into something, so please let me know. Over the 14 years before like you were known, did you have a lot of friends where you're like, they just kind of dropped off and they stopped acting and you just kept going? I did have a lot of friends who kind of stopped acting. I was doing theater very, very regularly where I was getting parts. Back in 2000, 2001, when I started doing theater, uh, I think for a good one and a half, two years, I was not getting a part. I was just running around doing production. 
work in the theater company. My specialty was that I would change the set very smoothly. So after every scene, there's a blackout and then the set would change in the blackout. And I would do like six, seven things in one go and there'd be no sound. I'd place the chair and put the furniture out and I would do all those things. That's to meet the ninja. <laughs> theater really helps. That theater company had a lot of senior actors who were doing work on television and films. And they couldn't be very regular for rehearsals because they had shootings. But the other actors needed rehearsals. So I would memorize all their lines and all their moves and I would do a proxy so that the other actors can rehearse. Wow. And my idea was that I should be so good at proxy that they, they stop feeling the need to call the big guy. <laughs> right, right. What kept you going when you saw friends dropping off and not acting anymore and you were still going? What motivated you to, to stay in it and stay strong? A part of you knows that it has to happen. Right. You know, a part of me always knew that how can it not happen? It has to happen. I mean, I don't see, I couldn't see a life without this happening. I had nothing else to fall back on. I said sooner or later it has to happen. And also I, I always kept myself busy. I never had free time. You know, it's not like I'm busy right now. I've, I've always been busy because I was doing theater, then I was writing for someone, and then I was doing something else. And mm -hmm. I was acting in some TV show and doing some ad films. You diversified. Yeah, I always found time to keep myself busy and occupied. That really helps. That's good advice. Yeah. That's good advice. Diversify, you know. Diversify, stay strong, self-belief. Yeah. yeah. Boom. Thank you so much, Sumit, for hanging out with us. We really appreciate it. Hopefully we can all uh, hang out in person again soon and get drinks. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we should, we should. I might be coming to New York, hopefully, by end of this year. I'll get to know him sometime. I will keep you in the loop. Yeah, yeah let me yeah. know, because I have family over there, so I'll fly out there if you're over there. Oh, lovely. Yeah, because I think Ribbon might be selected for some festival in New York, so we might be coming to New York for the for the festival. So yeah, that'd be exciting. really exciting. Wow, that's exciting. Yeah. That's cool. All right, well, cool. Hopefully I'll see you then. See you, see you, see you, JB. All right, you. happy Diwali again. <laughs> <laughs> yes, happy Diwali. <laughs> Bye. You guys, thanks so much for hanging out with us. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, be sure to check out Ribbon when it comes out in theaters near you. Check out Achara Kirk on the social media. Uh, or uh, re other reactions, reviews, and short films. I'm Jabby Kuwait. This is Achara Kirk. Peace out.